room to one rockstar families and welcome to our weekly vodcast i'm not in front of my green screen today guys i'm so sorry for that my green screen app is just kind of acting up so i just decided to come to you the old-fashioned way right here in person. I have a ton of announcements to get to before we head off to the strategy session for the week on this incredibly busy week in Room 21. First of all, I would like to congratulate this week's Rockstar of the Week, Caitlin Bird. Caitlin put in amazing levels of effective effort from Monday through Friday on her CSA test and beyond. And I'm just so incredibly proud of that level of effective effort that Caitlin put into her work that she is this week's Rockstar of the Week. So congratulations goes to Caitlin. Tomorrow, guys, we have two major things going on. First of all, in the morning, the scholars will be taking their algebra readiness test. Now, this is one of the components um, that goes into the decision um, as to what middle school math class your scholar will be going into. So just remind them to, you know, put as much effective effort into that test as they can. Good a good night's rest because we'll be taking that first thing in the morning. It's not the end all be all, but that's one of the major indicators as to what class that they will be put into next year as they go off to middle school. And then tomorrow, around lunchtime, we're heading over to Central Office for our field trip to the Civil War History Mobile. We'll actually be eating early at school at 1045, and then at 1130, we'll board the bus, head over to Central Office, and then we'll be back around 120. It's a really great trip. We've taken it in the past, and um, just a great way for the scholars to kind of connect their learning from fourth grade and now fifth grade about the Civil War. Um, in, in this interactive exhibit. So they do not need to bring anything for that. I'm still waiting on a couple permission forms, but I sent home an extra one on Friday. So please just get that to me. The trip is totally free. Your scholar needs to bring nothing you know, on the trip whatsoever. Coming up on Wednesday, we have our D.A.R.E. graduation. You know, I had to tell you guys, the scholars reading and um, presentations of their D.A.R.E. essays were incredible. Um, so many of the scholars put so much incredible effort into preparing for them that they really gave Deputy Scoggins a tough time in choosing um, one essay to be read at their graduation. But I would like to congratulate, number one, our runner-up, Shemaya Curtis. Shemaya did an outstanding job reading her essay in front of the classroom, and then Deputy Scoggins went ahead and chose Tristan Pinkerton to read his essay on Wednesday morning during the D.A.R.E. ceremony for our class. You are all welcome to attend the D.A.R.E. graduation on Wednesday morning at 9.15 in the morning in the activity room. Just remind your scholars to wear their red Keep Calm um, shirt for uh, the D.A.R.E. shirt that the PTO purchased them. That's going to be the dress for that ceremony. So remind them to wear that. You are all welcome to attend Wednesday 9.15 a.m. in the activity room. On Thursday night, you know, we have so many scholars from our classroom who have helped um, to put on Mary Poppins, a play that our school is doing this year, um, in some capacity, either backstage as an actor or actress, um, helping with, you know, everything, that um, it's really going to be an excellent production. And that is coming up on Thursday night at 7 p.m. in the activity room. So I hope to see you all there and break a leg to the rock stars who will be performing on Thursday night. And finally, our SOL dates are quickly approaching. Our reading SOL is coming up next Wednesday, May 13th. Okay, then our math test will be the following week on Thursday, May 21st. And our final SOL um, in science will be on Friday, June 5th. So please just make sure that your scholar is there on those dates, gets a good night's rest, a breakfast full of protein, comes ready to rock and roll and show that amazing effective effort that I know they have for their SOL coming up on that day. And you know, just to bounce off the topic of SOLs, we continue to have our science SOL um, nightly review with the quiz the next day. Your scholars are doing an incredible job on these quizzes, um, Rockstar families. I cannot tell you enough. You know, we just took the natural resource quiz um, on Friday and the scholars did amazing. You know, everybody in the class either missed zero or only one. So I'm so incredibly proud of the studying that they're putting into these, you know, to prep for the science as well coming up on June 5th. You know, this week we were looking at the scientific method and then we're starting to actually review fifth grade science topics. We're totally done reviewing the fourth grade topics. So we'll be into sound, light, and matter. Now I'm going to send you guys over to the strategy session and I'll catch you on the other end. Okay, Room 21 Rockstars, I'm starting you off on our brand new class website. I'm going to take you to the Vodcast Strategy section. 
Okay. Now, I have a bunch of things. I know that you guys are incredibly busy this week, especially if you're in the play. And we also have, you know, to make sure we're still studying our social, um, our science as well review. So I have a lot of the same activities from last week, including the increasing growth patterns, the function machine, and the finding mean, medium, mode range if you still feel like you need a little bit of practice there. So those are all here. If you bring in your work for these, you can get one house point for each problem that you bring in as long as you show it to me and share your um, strengths and areas that you feel like you want a little bit more work in Scholar's Loop. But... I do have a new lesson this week on combinations because that's what we're going to start on Tuesday after we take our algebra readiness test and wrap up our algebra unit. So you guys have looked at tree diagrams for a very long period of time. When, when we were in third grade, we would draw tree diagrams. Last year, you would draw tree tree diagrams. In fact, I saw many of your um, April math problem solving contests, and I saw your tree diagrams on problem number three or four, I believe, which was incredibly awesome because I think you all got that down. I think it was nine total combinations for those shirts. But this year, we're taking it a step further because what we want to do is find something called the sample, and you're going to hear this a lot this week. We want to find something called the sample space. Now, basically what that means is I want to find all the possible combinations and put them into list form for different scenarios. Okay, so tree diagrams show all the possible outcomes of experiments, and then we can get, can get ourselves a sample space. So look at this scenario that I have right here um, on possible outcomes. You need to decide on your snack. You can either have white or chocolate chip milk or chocolate milk to drink, wouldn't that be good? To eat, you can have chocolate milk or oatmeal cookies. How many different choices do you have? Now, this one's very basic, but here's how we make our tree diagram. Organization, guys, comes down to it when we're making tree diagrams. I'll say that right up front. So you make a start, and then you can either have white milk or chocolate milk. Now, let's just focus up here. If I, if I chose white milk, what are the two cookie choices I could have? Well, I could either have chocolate chip cookies or I could have oatmeal cookies, okay? And then if I chose chocolate milk, I could either also have chocolate chip cookies or oatmeal cookies. Now, the question is, how, many, how do I find out how many possible outcomes that I have? Here is how we go about that, guys. We come to the very end of our tree, to the very tips. Okay, now let me change the ink color so you can see. And I'm going to count up how many tips I have because I could either have white milk, chocolate chip cookies. That's choice one. I could either have white milk, oatmeal cookies. That'd be choice two. Do you notice I'm counting the tips of my tree? Okay, I could either have chocolate milk and chocolate chip cookies. That'd be a third combination. And finally, I could either have chocolate chip or chocolate milk and oatmeal cookies, that would be the fourth combination. So here I have four total combinations. Now let me show you a very common error that a lot of people make. Okay, Most people would start to count everything here. They'd say one, two, three, four, five, six combinations. What did they do wrong there if you just counted up every single thing that you listed in your tree diagram? Yeah, you weren't really thinking about the combinations. So for this particular tree diagram, you have two possible drinks, two cookie choices, four possible outcomes. Now, we all learned in third grade, and you also learned last year in fourth grade, that you can multiply, okay? You can take the number of options you have with milk, and you can multiply that by the number of options that you have with cookies, and you also get the same number of possible outcomes. Now, if you guys wanted that fancy word for what that's called, that's called the, let me type it in here for you so you don't have to bear with my awful handwriting with this program. That is called the foundational counting principle. Okay, that's a fancy word for basically saying instead of actually drawing out the tree diagram, you can multiply the number of options you have um, with the first choice in this, turn, in the, in this um, situation, it's milk, and you can multiply that by the number of choices you have with the second option, and that'd be two cookies, and you get the possible outcomes. Let's look at one more, okay, with the foundational principle. In an experiment, Philip flips two counters. Here they are. One side of each counter is blue, and the other side is red. Find all the possible outcomes. What is the probability of both counters landing blue side up? So once again, you can use a tree diagram to show all possible outcomes. So that in event one, the first counter, you can either get blue or red. In event two, the second counter, if you flip blue the first time, you can get either blue this time or red this time. And in same thing, if you flipped red the first time, you can either get blue or red the second time. Okay. So then the four outcomes are here. Okay, 
and the probability of getting blue both times is one in four, okay? So this is our sample space. We're gonna talk more about that um, later this week, okay? And then finally, I gave you guys a bunch of different practice, and this is where you can get your house points this week, okay? And your goal is to create a chart and a tree diagram, also known as a sample space for each of these. Let me just close that out for now. We'll get to that in a second, guys. So number one, there are three buses on the bus ramp. Number 32, 81, and 175 lists all the possible ways that they can line up. This was actually, you know how I have been giving you guys the math for the staff problems? This was one of those. Here's another one. You walk into the cafeteria and you are informed that you may either have pizza or a fish sandwich as your entree. You can also choose between green beans, spinach, or corn as your vegetable. How many possible options do you have? For each of these, I'll give you five house points each if you show me both a chart with the possible options and also a tree diagram. Okay. And finally, number three, all I want you guys to do for this question is simply tell me how many possible outcomes do I have if I flip a coin with heads and tails and a six-sided die. How many possible outcomes would I have? How many possible combinations? Just look at this, count it up, explain your work, and I'll give you another five house points, okay? So I have fewer problems for you guys this week, but I really want you to take the time to think about these, especially since we haven't really talked about them much yet in class. So pause your screen right now if you want to go ahead and work on these. And now I'm going to take us over to our class fusion page. There are two other areas where you can go. You can go to IXL for some combination practice right here. And finally, the study jams this week, I actually just wanted to go through, listen as we watch. Summer's here and the ice cream truck is in town. The truck offers three flavors of ice cream, vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. The toppings choices are walnuts, sprinkles, chocolate fudge, and cookie crumbs. Zoe only has enough money for one scoop with one topping. How many choices does she have? Let's use a tree diagram to show how many total possible combinations there are. Okay. Now, with the foundational pr counting principle, you could simply multiply three combinations for ice cream and four combinations for toppings and get 12. So we should have 12 possible outcomes, guys. First, list the first three options, which are the flavors. The flavors are vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Next, list the topping choices for the first flavor. Start with vanilla and make sure to draw a branch to each topping. Walnuts, sprinkles, chocolate fudge, and cookie cream. Move to the next flavor and list each of the topping choices again. Under chocolate, list walnuts, sprinkles, chocolate fudge, and cookie crumbs. Now, add the topping choices to strawberry. Under strawberry, list walnuts, sprinkles, chocolate fudge, and cookie crumbs. Finally, add the possible combinations together by counting the bottom row of the tree diagram. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So guys, it checked out with the foundational counting principle. Zoe now knows that she has 12 total possible combinations or outcomes at the ice cream truck. If it were me, I'd be all over the chocolate with chocolate fudge. So I thought that was a pretty good overview, guys, in case you were struggling with the probability and combinations. And we'll look at that again later. Now, before I get to the other strategies for the week, the hashtag, secret hashtag of the week is hash tag grammaries because the grammaries are coming up next monday and i've been so incredibly proud of the writing that i have been judging so far guys so one week from tomorrow the grammaries will be here and the hashtag for the week is hashtag grammaries now let me show you the other areas that i have for you going on this week first of all the writing fix of the week you know this weekend i finally felt like um, spring is here and it, it, summer is approaching. I could not believe the, the small amount of time we have left together, rock stars. And so I found this picture and I just want you to write down 
what does this make you think of? Um, what does what emotions does it bring on? You know, personally for me, when I was a kid and your age, guys, we would just lay out in the yard and look up at those big old cumulus clouds and make the shapes out of them, which was a lot of fun. So write to this picture, use some figurative language, hashtag five house points if you bring it in for me. As always, I know a lot of you have been using the Science SOL study guides on this website. A lot of you have told me about that. So if in case you forget your study guide at home, you can always check out and see, okay, what topic do we have tonight? This week we have scientific method, sound, light, and matter. Okay, so we're, we're back to studying the fifth grade um, concepts, guys, which is actually really exciting um, because we're really moving along and I mean, we're on to the things that we've talked about this year, so we shouldn't have to put too much effort into those because I feel that you guys really mastered those concepts. So make sure you go into the fifth grade concepts folder because that is where we are now at. Those are the strategies for the week. As always, you can always check out our Twitter page, guys, for uh, an updated feed and also get excited for those grammaries as they are coming up next Monday. They are going to be incredible. The place is going to be rocking. I cannot wait for that. Now, at this time, I'm going to send you back over to Mr. Riker. Okay, Room 21 Rockstar families, I hope that those strategies were successful. I hope you are enjoying this beautiful day and the beautiful week that the weather forecast um, has for us here in Stafford. We have such an amazing week ready to go. I cannot believe that we only have 29 days of school left together before your scholars move off to sixth grade, but they are working harder than ever with an incredible level of effective effort, and I'm just so very proud of them. Please let them know that. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please do not hesitate to contact me. And you can always check us out on Twitter, at Rikard Rock, our class YouTube page, our brand new class website, and you can always feel free to contact me if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. You guys are the best families in Stafford County, and I'll see you next time.